Steve Bannon joins me now from Rome. Mr. Bannon, it's a pleasure to have you on. Uh, I want to get to Obamacare a little bit later on, but let's, let's just start with what the Attorney General Barr, according to uh, Chairman Nadler, not committing to releasing the full Mueller report. Do you think he should accept, of course, for classified material or grand jury proceedings? Look, I think it's obviously up to the attorney general as somebody that was part of the process. Uh, I think they ought to release it, but it's the attorney general's decision. You know, one of the things Anderson, I think, is lost in all this is, is President Trump, you know, waived executive privilege. He waived attorney client privilege. He had, you know, not just Reince Priebus and myself, but Dom McGahn, the White House counsel and others. I think it was like 500 witnesses, what, 2,800 subpoenas. So the president went out of his way to get all this information out and get it out quickly. So I would assume that uh, everybody would want to get the full report out to people, except for what's classified or what needs to be redacted. Yeah, and Lindsey Graham just said today that the president told him directly, said, quote, just release it. Um, I know you thought it was legal, but not wise for the president to fire Comey. Given the fact that Mueller has now exonerated the president and those around him when it comes to any kind of collusion or criminal conspiracy with Russia, was it smart in retrospect for the president to have been attacking the investigation in the way that he did really for the last two years? Well, you know, actually, I actually used you as an example when we uh, talked, uh, when I talked with the president back in the Oval Office, I said, hey, on the Comey investigation, I said, even Anderson Cooper, you know, has got this in the C block. This was in the spring of 17. Uh, but, uh, you know, the president uh, uh, had his own uh, ideas about the job that Comey was doing, and so he, uh, he terminated him. Uh, I always said that Mueller, I think, is an honorable guy. He's a, he's a combat veteran. He's a combat Marine. Uh, and the president, you know, whatever he said on Twitter or whatever he said, you know, in, in, in public declarations or on TV, the important thing was he told everybody to cooperate and to get it out there like no other president's ever done. That's what was stunning. And in fact, I was kind of a, a critic about how quickly they were releasing information. I thought it ought to be a little bit more processed. You know, there's 1.2 million documents to release. So I think the president's actions where he was fully supportive of the Mueller investigation. And that's, that's why I think it's in coming back like it is to kind of exonerate him. Uh, I actually think it's time to release the documents and let's move on and get on with the work of the country. You, you've been very clear uh, about no collusion uh, all along. You've been probably less definitive, I think it's fair to say, when it comes to obstruction of justice. Were you surprised that Mueller himself did not reach a conclusion or recommendation on that and essentially handed over to the attorney general to make a, uh, a conclusion? Look, look, I'm not a lawyer, but the way I look at it, prosecutors either charge or they don't charge. You know, the, the no exoneration line, uh, to me, I thought was a little bit of a cheap shot. Um, and, you know, I've been very supportive of the Mueller process. Uh, look, he, here's the thing. They took two years. They looked at everything. Uh, it wasn't that I was concerned about obstruction of justice. I didn't think there was any. But, you know, when you go through all these documents, and that's why the 18 election, you know, by the uh, Democrats getting out there and working so hard, the grassroots Democrats winning the House, I said, look, what they're going to try to do is weaponize the Mueller report and, uh, and to use that as the beginning under Nadler's, uh, Jerry Nadler's uh, Judiciary Committee to start kind of impeachment hearings and impeachment process. I actually think that this, what happened is with this report, it looks like that's all going to be put to bed. So <clears throat> we'll just have to see when it gets released. But I think it's really time to, to kind of release it, people review it, and then move on. And let's get on with the, uh, the, the great work in front of us. So, that, I mean, it's interesting. You, you believe... Uh, even if there's, you know, the report is released, even if it has negative, you know, some uh, some things which are questionable behavior by the president or an attempt to, you know, uh, cover up what the Trump Tower meeting was with a sort of alternative explanation about it was about adoption. As long as it's not criminal, at this point, you think it's done no matter what's released, it's really not going to matter. And no matter what Democrats try uh, in terms of, in your words, weaponizing, but in terms of investigating, it's, it's not going to matter? Yeah, I just, I think it's, I, I think, look, if there's anything substantive, you know, Mueller had what, uh, you know, what, 20, uh, you know, uh, serious professional prosecutors. They had 42 field agents in the FBI. I know as somebody who went through the process, Anderson, it was like a proctology exam. <laughs> and and uh, I was a witness of fact, mm -hmm. uh, as was Dom McGahn and was uh, Reince Priebus. And, and so this was a very thorough investigation. I think if, if Mueller had something, being the kind of senior level prosecutor he was, he, he would have done something. And I think by not doing anything and, and saying there was no collusion, which this whole thing started about, uh, I, I think I just don't think there's going to be much there. Look, it's a, it's a 
It's what, over a thousand pages long, we'll have to see. I said, you know, early on that if the Democrats won the House and the Mueller report, you know, had these type of charges in there, had this type of stuff, that the, the Democrats are trying to, what I call, weaponize it and really use it to move forward. But I think you're seeing already in the House people like Nancy Pelosi saying, hey, we got to get focused on health care. We got to get focused on other things. So I think that this is, uh, you know, a time to move on. I do think that the media ought to kind of assess both their coverage, and I've said this for a long time, both their coverage of the 2016 campaign and now their coverage of this whole investigative process. I think the, the media ought to be self-regulating and kind of internally look at itself. And then I think we just got to move on. There's so much in front of us with China and what's going on in the world. It's time to get focused on the big problems facing the country. Yeah, uh, and there's a lot of there stuff going on with China, which I, I do want to talk to you about. I, I, in, in an interview, though, I think you gave earlier this week, you said that the president is going uh, to, quote, or going to go full animal. Uh, which is an expression I hadn't really heard before, but it has really stuck in my mind. Now that he sees himself as no longer being under the cloud of the Mueller investigation, what does going full animal look like? What does that mean for, because uh, I also know you said that 2019 will be the most vitriolic year in American politics since before the Civil War, and you include Vietnam in that. Both of those things are pretty startling yes. statements. What is, what's the vision for this year then? Well, you know, it, I was talking to a Spanish journalist, and I think I said honey badger, which, as you know, is one of my favorite phrases. I'm, I love Look, honey I badger. I think the president's going to be honey very badger aggressive. Honey badger don't care. <laughs> yeah, and exactly, exactly. I think, the, I think the president's going to be very aggressive. You saw some of the tweets. In fact, I was talking here to the Foreign Press Association in, in Rome, and the president tweeted out at the time this thing about the opposition party media. So I think the president's going to be very uh, aggressive. I think he feels like the, the work of the country, the, particularly the work he had, was kind of slowed down, particularly when you look internationally, uh, because of some of the, the hysteria around this investigation, not the investigation. And I think this is the thing that people should focus on. He, you know, overly supplied people with documents. He was very aggressive in getting this information out there because he, he said from day one, there's no collusion. But I think about the hysteria is that's what he's, he's you know, I think reasonably upset about. And I think right. you would definitely see some pushback. You know, President Trump's a fighter. As I don't need to tell you, Anderson, you know him very well. He's a fighter. And I think he looks at this as a fight. And uh, I think he's going to be very aggressive. I think he's going to start giving interviews. And I think he's going to really try to push this. And look, we're just in the time, and I think democracy has never been stronger in America. We just had 113 million people vote in the midterm elections. I think it, it, we are divided, but I, I think division is good and healthy because people have to argue out and have to, have to kind of fight at the ballot box for what they believe in. And I think the country is very engaged in this political process. I do think this year is going to be very vitriolic, and I think we're just going to have to work through this. But I think the President of the United States, and I think rightfully so, that Donald Trump's going to be very aggressive and kind of pushing back on this what I think he believes was media hysteria around the investigation at the entire time that he was actually putting everybody in the White House, everybody right. on the campaign, front and center with all these documents and his lawyers that kind of worked through this. But, but you know, I mean, I, I, listen, I, I understand the criticism of, of the media. I, I, I think every reporter I know is constantly trying to look inward and look at their coverage. Um, and if something is wrong, apologize for it and correct it as quickly as possible. But at the same time, the president himself has, while he may have been behind the scenes, or the people at the White House may have been behind the scenes providing all the documents that, that they needed, publicly, he, cert he certainly gave a lot of people a lot of reasons to scratch their heads and think, wait a minute. I mean, from interviews he gave to tweets he sent to things he said to the Russians in the Oval Office. I mean, he did provide a lot of the, the, the questions. I mean, he certainly stoked it, whether he meant to or not. Well, Anderson, I mean, but, you know, Mueller had all this to go through. So I think he saw it. It was no collusion. And, right. you know, if the atmosphere, uh, I think the president justifiably looked at, and I've said this from day one, after the 16 defeat, the Democratic Party was in such a disarray, the mainstream media was really the opposition party as it had kind of been on the campaign. And I'm the one that came up with that term. And it, it, it was the opposition party media. I think instead of doing mea culpas or, or, or you know, big inflections, you know, eternally, one of the things the media could do, and I think this is a big issue for both, you know, conservative and liberal media, and this is the, the FBI's counterintelligence operation and some of the CIA, what was done at the beginning of this investigation of the Trump campaign. I think it's really got to be looked into. And I've said now, Anderson, for over a year and a half, 
I believe something like the Church Commission is going to have to be established to look at the FBI's behavior in this and the CIA. And I would hope, you know, in the old days, in the 70s, the New York Times and the Washington Post would lead these investigations. That's not happening. Maybe CNN will do it, but I think there's a lot there. And this is not to get partisan. I think this is for the good of the country. We have to look at what, and I'm a huge supporter. I'm not, I've never been a conspiracy theory guy. I'm a former naval officer. And my daughter's at West Point. Uh, I, I've never, I'm not a deep state guy. But we have some big problems. I think we have to, in a bipartisan way, look at what these investigations were, particularly look at the start of the Trump inve the investigation, the Trump thing, and I think really seriously question some of the FBI counterintelligence and some of the CIA and maybe even foreign intelligence services. Hmm. And I think this is for the good of the country and for the good of the FBI and the CIA too, but I would hope that that would be the next phase of investigations here.